Okay, let's talk about how to create and link a group policy object. Now, I am still in my group policy management uh, console, and if you don't remember, you can go to Server Manager Tools and find Group Policy Management, and that will take you to this Group Policy Management console. All right, and remember, we've talked about the fact that uh, Group Policy Objects, GPOs, are linked to organizational units but they technically live here in this folder called group policy objects. Now, there's two different ways I can do this. I can, let's say I want a group policy to apply to my guests. All right, <clears throat> I, now first thing I need to remember is that my guest in my um, Active Directory, my guest so you only creates users, or only contains users, there we go. Get the right word there. Only contains users. So if I go to create a group policy to apply to everybody in the guest folder, I need to make sure that all of the settings that or settings that I set or that I change are in the user configuration node, not the computer configuration node. Now there's two different ways I can create a GPO. One is if I right click here, I can create a GPO in this domain and link it here. So that will actually create it here in Group Policy Objects and it will automatically link it there. The other is to come down to Group Policy Objects, right click and create a new GPO. Now when I do that, it asks me for a name and then a starter GPO. Now this is optional, in fact it defaults to none, which is a really good thing because you know I have no starter GPOs. Now, what a starter GPO is, is it's kind of like a baseline template. Now, you don't have to use starter GPOs. In fact, I normally don't. I find other ways to accomplish what I want rather than using starter GPOs. But let's say I have, I want to do one group policy for each organizational unit but there are a handful of settings that I want to be consistent across all of them. Well, then I can create a starter GPO, and in that starter GPO, I can put all of those settings. And then when I create my specific GPOs, I can base them on that starter GPO, and all of those settings will be part of that. Basically, is a template. That template gets copied over to my uh, new GPO, and then I just make the changes that I want to make. That's what the starter GPOs are about. Now, I don't care to use one of those right now, so I'm just going to right click on Group Policy Objects and create a new one. And I'm going to call this Guest Restrictions. Don't want to use a starter GPO, so I'm going to hit OK. And now I have a new group policy here called Guest Restrictions. And I actually haven't said anything on this yet, so this is kind of pointless, but we'll fix that here in a minute. So here's my Guest Restrictions. If I click on details, <clears throat> my GPO is enabled, which is hilarious because I'm not actually doing anything with it. And here are all of my options, disable it all, disable the computer configuration, disable the user configuration, enable everything. This right here, if my settings, will give me all of the settings that I currently have. And you'll notice here, computer configuration is enabled, but no settings are defined. User configuration is enabled, but no settings are defined. General, I have a handful of things here. So details, this is all the details about it. And over here I've got show or hide buttons. I want to hide that. I want to look at links, so I'm going to do show and it's not linked anywhere. I'm done with that, so I want to hide that. All right. And we're going to see the same thing once we get in a little farther and we actually set some settings down here. All right. So I want to edit this. So I'm going to right click on guest restrictions and I'm going to click on edit. And that's going to bring up my Group Policy Management Editor, which we went through real briefly in a previous video. So let's set a couple of policies here. And because this is going to be for guests and restricting guest access, I really don't want preferences because I don't want them to be able to override them. I want policies. So uh, let's just pick a few of them here at random just for the fun of it. So let me go to the control panel. Um, click on the control panel itself. Here are all the subfolders and uh, subfolders for add or remove programs, display personalization, and then these apply to the whole thing. So I can hide specified control panel items, always open control panel, uh, control panel items and opening the control panel, prohibit access to control panel and PC settings, show only specified control panel items. I want to just prohibit access. So I'm going to click on this one. Now, one thing we didn't talk about before, this right here 
is a brief overview of it, and this is on the extended view. It'll show you, without going into it, what those specific settings kind of entail. If you go standard, it actually gives you a little bit more room over here. Personally, I kind of like it because it's a little cleaner, but honestly, this is actually easier to find things. Because I can look at hide control panel items, and it'll tell me the requirements, at least Windows 2000. This is a description, what it does. Um, and it'll allow me to compare these things faster. So, this one, prohibit access to control panel and PC settings. That one, right here, disables all control panel programs and PC settings. That's what I want. So, I'm going to open it up. And I'm going to say, yes, I want this to be enabled. And I can add a little comment here. I don't have to. This will block access to the control panel. and PC settings for guest users. All right, so it just gives me a little bit of a note there. And then this is the uh, basically the same information as you have right here. Okay, so I'm going to say, yeah, I like that setting. I'm going to hit Apply and OK. And now that's going to show me that that is enabled. And so anybody who's in my guest account, once I actually finish this up, won't be able to access the PC settings. That sounds really, really useful. All right, is there anything else out here that we think should be useful? Well, the settings pages, things like that, we really don't care about it because we disabled all of it, so that's cool. So let's go ahead and minimize that. What about the desktop? So, <coughs> prohibit user from manually redirecting profile folders, hide and disable all items on the network, Lots of different items down here. This sounds really useful. Let's take this one right here. We won't look at all of them. We'll just grab a few of them at random. Don't save settings at exit. Well, yeah, because they're a guest user. So I want to say, yeah, don't save settings on exit. That way, the next person who comes along won't be trapped by their settings. Um, let's remove the computer icon because I don't want them to be able to access those drives. Now, this doesn't necessarily stop them from doing that. I have to do it somewhere else. But this, you know, makes it a little bit harder. Um, it's not sitting right there just asking for them to click on it. Uh, prohibit users from manually redirecting profile folders. Yeah, that one sounds interesting. So I'm going to enable that one. Now, normally, when you do this, obviously, you were, you're going to have sat down and talked through and thought through what are the things we want to restrict. You won't be doing what I'm doing, just going through and, you know, picking ones at random. But you'll have specific restrictions that you want to have in place. All right, so I've saved a few settings here. Now, I'm going to close this policy. And then I want to refresh my settings. And now you'll see under group restrictions, I have some policies. So, or my user configuration is enabled. There are policies and administrative templates under administrative templates that are set. And I'm just going to show all of those. And this is going to show the settings that I've enabled, which is very, very convenient. Now, this still doesn't accomplish anything because I have my group policy in place, but you'll notice my group policy still isn't linked anywhere. So it's still not going to accomplish anything. So I want to, uh, cre here's your other uh, place for looking at the links. I want to link this group policy to my guests organizational unit, which is where all my guest accounts are going to be. So the, real, the easiest way to do it, go to the OU, right click, link an existing GPO, and then just pick the one that you want. And now that is linked. And as long as that link is enabled and my policy restrictions, um, details, that's the one that I want. As long as my GPO status is enabled, we're good. The next time somebody from the guest account logs in, they will get these specific restrictions. And that's it. That's how you create edit and link a group policy 
in uh, the Group Policy Management Console. Now, reminder, you don't want to do this off, cuff, off the cuff. Sit down as a group, sit down with your management team, sit down with whoever you need to, get everybody involved, whoever's involved in hel uh, helping set security settings. Talk through what are the restrictions we need, what do we want people to be able to do or not be able to do. And then design your policies off of that. That way it's coming from a place that's hopefully being logically thought through. And we don't end up creating problems for ourselves by restricting things that people actually need to do to be able to do their job or by giving them access that they don't need and potentially opening, our, opening ourselves up to more problems later on. Okay, so that is creating, editing, and linking group policy objects.